I, 38 male, decided to take my wife of five years camping for her 30th birthday. She was an outdoorsy extrovert, and I was and am an introvert with a healthy combination of lazy and active tendencies. A month prior to our camping trip, my wife had started harping on me to get more active and thoughtful in our relationship. I was a little surprised when she said it because it sounded like she was getting bored of me. She did message a lot of people on a regular basis and even made friends in public. I didn't understand how or why she did it. I wanted to live off the grid in a cabin in the woods, but I knew that wasn't her dream. She worked part-time on her laptop as a writer, usually going to a park or somewhere outdoors to work. Meanwhile, I was the breadwinner, raking in piles of cash with my hard labor and industrial installation career. At first she would always offer me a back rub when I got home, sometimes even a full body massage. It was amazing. I felt like she really cared about me and how hard I worked. Eventually though, she stopped offering and started asking more of me in my time off. I tried to tell her how I felt, but she wouldn't listen unless I was giving in to one of her requests. These requests didn't seem like much to her, but they were to me. Being an introvert, I did not want to go to the parties she was invited to. Somehow she was always invited on trips or to people's houses, and I never wanted to go. A trip with just us would have been fine, but to go to a stranger's house and sleep over seemed like a big uncomfortable thing to me. I hate chit-chat. So, to compromise, I told her about the birthday trip I planned for us. Just me and her spending four days on Assateague Island camping in her fold-down RV. She was ecstatic. She loved horses and camping, but never imagined traveling there and making it happen. In the weeks leading up to this trip, she started giving me massages again. At the time, I had no idea what my wife was capable of and just how much she convinced herself there were other men out there for her to find. On the island, our campsite was no more than 70 yards away from another RV. It was bigger and fancier. Way more than I wanted or needed. Of course, my wife was impressed. When the Pawnees came over to us, they didn't linger for long. They headed for the neighboring RV because they already had a campfire going. My wife used this as an excuse to go introduce herself. She asked me to go with her, but I didn't want to. I told her I didn't mind if she went over to chat and told her I loved her. She was gone for an hour before I decided to go over there. As I approached, I noticed it was a single attractive man that my wife was chatting away with. In my mind, I was wondering why he needed such an obnoxious RV if it was only him. She was laughing and blushing, and it was clear to me she really liked this guy. Not only that, but she looked at me like she was disappointed when I finally decided to show up. She hesitated to introduce me as her husband, and that was the greatest slap in the face. I told her I wanted her to come back to the RV with me, and she asked why. I was so embarrassed she was challenging me. I just told her I had a surprise for her, because I knew it was the only way she'd come with me. Even then, she told AP she'd be right back. When we got back to our site, the horses followed me. My wife was thrilled by that. The horses surrounded me, as I firmly reminded her I was doing this all for her. She was my world, and I wanted to show her I could be her husband without being an extrovert. I reminded her how well we loved each other over the past five years, and how I could continue being the man for her. Then I asked her why she even wanted to talk to this guy, or have so many friends, or go to parties. I asked what valuable fulfillment it gave her, in her heart, and why it made her feel good to smear on makeup, put on a dress, and go converse with people, even if I wasn't there. She was surprised and a little offended, but when she tried to explain the pleasure she got from being an extrovert, she only sounded egotistical and shallow. She realized how she sounded and got frustrated with me, concluding that she was just going to make friends and talk to whoever she wanted, whether I approved or not. She tried to make it sound like I was controlling her, but I wasn't. I always let her do whatever it was she wanted, even if it didn't make sense to me. Throughout our marriage, she never cheated on me or gave me any reason to believe I couldn't trust her. Although, I never did check her phone. I wasn't confrontational and never felt like I needed to see who she was talking to. I really didn't know just how heartless she could be. She put in her earbuds and sat with the horses on our site. I was relieved she didn't go back to AP out of spite, so I started our own campfire, hoping it would make her happy.
Eventually, we went to bed in silence. My wife curled up alone on the far side of the bed. I was glad to get some sleep and a fresh start in the morning. I had no idea I was about to wake up much earlier than expected. It was still dark out when I turned over to spoon my wife and she was gone. Instantly, I was thrown into a nightmare. I instantly pictured her with AP in his RV, but I spared a few seconds to check our bathroom. She wasn't there. I put on my robe and slippers, raced over to the RV, and listened. As soon as I heard the slightest noise from inside, I banged on the door. I heard my wife gasp, followed by some shuffling. As soon as AP opened the door, I pushed my way in while yelling for her. She was breathless and frantic, adjusting her pajamas and walking out from the small bedroom. When I could see her face, she looked terrified. Just then, AP shoved me really hard, straight out the door of his RV. I landed on my back, and it hurt bad, but I still got to my feet. This was when my wife absolutely broke down. She started crying harder than I ever saw in my life, and she was screaming at AP for hurting me. I started walking back to our site, and she flocked to my side, trying to make herself useful by holding up my arm. I yanked away and told her I was a man, and I didn't need her to survive. She could barely speak, but she was saying sorry and stuttering to explain why she was in AP's RV. She couldn't form a sentence, and she'd buy herself time by sobbing. She knew she was guilty, she just didn't want to say it. She wanted to lie and cover it up. I cut to the chase and told her I knew she slept with him. I knew she was willing to sleep with him and sneak off for me to defile our marriage. I told her we were over and I would be filing for divorce. As I said it, I knew I was making this decision quickly, but I also knew she did this to me and it was reality now. I knew my logic was sound and I knew I would stand firm in my decision. My wife started hyperventilating and it was hard to see her that way. I really wanted to make her feel better because all she wanted was me and I wanted her, but I knew I couldn't. We were stuck together, at least for the night, because I needed to sleep before driving us home. At this point she was willing to do anything to show me respect and humility, so she left me alone to sleep. She would have done anything for my forgiveness, which is such a shame because she should have considered how much I mattered to her before she decided to cheat on me with a camping stranger. On the car ride home, it was silent and awkward. I thought about how I had noticed the downfall in her behavior, but never imagined she'd do this. I had tried to talk to her about things before, but it never helped because she wasn't willing to change her perspective or let what I was saying sink in. When we got home, she refused to pack her stuff. She did not want to tell her father what happened. She didn't want anyone to know or get involved in our business. I had no choice but to call her dad. Her dad helped her pack her stuff, and it was like she was a child. It was disturbing. I trusted her father enough to leave them to it while I went for a drive. Out of all the people she talked to on her cell phone, I didn't know any of them personally. I didn't know which of her friends would actually come help her get her stuff, but in the end, the answer was no one. None of her friends were really friends. They were all superficial and absorbed in their own lives, except for one thing. They all thrived on the drama when they got wind of my wife's infidelity and divorce, in which she lost everything. That's when some of them messaged her to get the scoop and tell her she was right and totally justified in her actions, and some of them scolded her and called her what she really was. Some of them stopped talking to her completely, which included one of her closest friends. She was so heartbroken that she stopped writing and earning an income. I can only hope she learned her lesson. I hope she realizes that she was obsessed with the wrong things and convinced herself over time that she didn't need me or deserve someone else. Well, she got her opportunity, except now she can't find someone else. As much as it hurt to let her go, accept what happened, and start over, I know I grew from this experience. She was only my first attempt at marriage and won't be the last. I take what I can from those years in my life and let it fuel me to be better. More selfless, understanding, observant, and willing to love my partner in her love language. OP, I am so sorry your wife failed you. She had an intrusive thought that fed her ego and built into it without a second thought. She can use her time alone wisely by self-analyzing, meditating, and reforming her mind. We all get carried away with certain thoughts, ideas, or feelings and build onto those with different notions, all while forgetting to remember that we can only perceive one perception.
We can't possibly be right all the time, and we have to take the time to self-reflect and improve. Suppressing selfishness, greed, inconsideration, and the ego is an ongoing battle. Every day, remind yourself how big the world is and how each person is an extension of yourself. Imagine how harmonious relationships would become if we considered our loved ones' minds as equal to our own. Not the same, but of equal importance and entitlement. You may have different ways of processing things and different desires or concepts of a fulfilling life. Take consideration and think before you speak or act. Thank you for sharing your story. Now, let's get into today's second story. My wife, 26 female, was extremely competitive with her twin sister. I, 32 male, noticed pretty quickly that she compared their jobs, houses, community involvement, style, self-discipline, and even spouses. Yes, she even compared me to her brother-in-law. In these comparisons, she usually claimed herself the higher achiever, and her sister merely a close second, but in certain things, my wife wasn't as confident and looked to me for reassurance. To my dismay, she didn't seem totally convinced that I was the better catch. After talking about her brother-in-law's career in law enforcement and weightlifting dedication, she got quiet and inevitably started giving me hints that she wanted me to do some of the things he was doing. I was fit and lean, working as a van driver and handyman in a small, privately owned construction company. I wasn't making very much money, but it was enough to pay half the household bills. My wife covered the other half with her various social media platform sponsors and a part-time job as a makeup saleswoman. When she started comparing me to her sister's husband, I lost it. I told her she was lucky she had such an easy way to earn money and that she owed it to the fact that she was born with a beautiful face and learned how to charm and manipulate people. She was pretty upset with me after that and didn't want to listen when I said I was working really hard and it was only a matter of time before I got a pay increase. It wasn't long after this interaction that I noticed my wife's increased interaction with her brother-in-law. They were commenting on each other's posts and pictures on social media. I knew he was texting her because I saw a preview of his text pop up on my wife's phone before she grabbed it. Everything came to a head when I saw them at a cookout together. My wife's entire family was there, so it was crowded, but out of all the people my wife could have been catching up with, she was standing side by side with her brother-in-law. As soon as I went to the bathroom, she disappeared to find him. By the time I found her, they were smiling and talking intimately. Irritated, I scanned the crowd for my sister-in-law. She was oblivious to what her sister and husband were doing. Since my wife was distracted, I went through her purse to find her phone. I took it to the bathroom and had time to read and screenshot a plethora of messages that spelled out their emotional and lustful affair. My wife admired him for his bravery and self-discipline, physical fitness, and flattered him in a variety of ways. Some things she never even said to me. They sent each other nudes, and that's when my hands started shaking. Their most recent messages were plans to meet at a cheap motel in four days, when their spouses would be working. I couldn't believe what I was reading because my wife as I knew her would never be so heartless or inconsiderate enough to have an affair with her own sister's husband. Yet, it was clearly happening. I waited until after the cookout to text the most crucial screenshots to my sister-in-law, along with a message that suggested we wait to ambush them at the motel with additional family members. She was completely shocked and devastated, so it took some persuasion to get her to agree to keep it a secret until then. When the day came, she and I, plus ten other family members, including their parents and members of AP's family, sat in our cars and waited for them to check in. They were riding in AP's car, looking as giddy as a new lewd couple. As soon as they started walking towards their room, keycard in hand, all of us got out and started walking towards them. I remember I was the one that got their attention first, followed by the rest of the family. When they saw us, it looked like they were struck by lightning. They froze, gasped, locked up, and needed to change their drawers. My wife's sister started screaming at them, which made her husband drop to his knees, trying to reach for her hand in desperation. My wife did not know what to say. She didn't like being wrong, and she was clearly wrong in this for her entire family to see. She just started saying they didn't do anything over and over again, trying to yell louder than the other family members and myself. I finally showed her the picture she sent to AP, and that made her shut up, 
but she still didn't want to accept this shame and guilt. She turned and tried to speed walk away, but her uncle stopped her and called her a homewrecker, scolding her for ruining her sister's life. He demanded she face her and take accountability for her actions, but she just screamed and kicked when he wouldn't let her go. She ran down the street crying because she didn't drive to the motel. AP was willing to do anything to win back the love of his wife, but she refused to maintain a broken marriage with someone she couldn't trust. I felt the same way, and even though my wife wasn't begging my forgiveness at the time, she called me howling when she received divorce papers. With the screenshots and entire family as my witness, she couldn't claim her innocence, and she finally broke down. She admitted she made the worst mistake of her life, and that she never should have been comparing her sister's life to her own. Even though they both regretted it, my wife and AP were shunned from the family, never to be contacted again. Without her mom, sister, or dad, my ex went down a metaphorical hole, and never maintained the image that paid her so well before. She started smoking and drinking, while I got a huge promotion to assistant lead in a growing construction company. OP, I am so sorry your wife did this to you and her sister. Her unfairly competitive nature and habit to compare life accomplishments with her sister were huge red flags. It's always healthier and more beneficial to see other people as your equal. There's mutual respect and a willingness to allow others to earn your trust, instead of this inconsideration and betrayal. Human nature provides us with an ego, but without keeping it in check, it's easy to feel entitled or like our perspective and desires can't possibly be wrong. Take the time to meditate on the fact that you are only human, with a brain that you can learn to control. Your thoughts, feelings, and emotions are natural options your brain will offer up, but it's up to you to choose what to feed on. Remember to appreciate your loved ones for who they are, not who you want them to be. Thank you all for taking the time to listen to today's stories. If you enjoyed listening, please feel free to like and subscribe if you haven't already. Also, comment below with your thoughts on what happened. If there is a story you would like to share with me about your own situation or someone else's, then please do not hesitate to contact me. Take care.